Okay, so welcome back. Um, today we're going to start a brand new series. And in this series, we're going to talk about what you see here. And what I've got is I've got a few devices here, and they are communicating over a Wi-Fi Ethernet connection. And we're going to show you how to set this up so that you can talk over Wi-Fi to different devices. And what we've got here, we've got a desktop computer. We've got a Raspberry Pi, which we've talked about before. We've got an Arduino. And these two devices, the Raspberry Pi and Arduino, have built-in Wi-Fi chips that allow them to communicate over Wi-Fi. So you don't need any USB connections or anything else. You can just talk over Wi-Fi. Now, in previous videos, we talked about, in general, how does Wi-Fi work? And you can see all this terminology here, TCP, IP ports. We talked about that in a recent video. I encourage you to take a look at that. And we also talked about this Arduino. It's very inexpensive Arduino. It's only like $10. And it's really great for engineering, data acquisition, and all kinds of functionality. And it has a built-in Wi-Fi chip that allows you to not only program it, but to communicate with it over Wi-Fi. So I encourage you to take a look at that. So what this series is going to do is going to show you how to write some very simple code for each of these devices, for the desktop, for the Arduino, and for the Raspberry Pi that will allow you to communicate over Wi-Fi. So why would you need to do this? Well, for example, um, let's say you've got these devices that are acquiring data. For example, let's say you're doing some engineering analysis or you're monitoring temperatures or you're monitoring something and you want to gather that data being measured by this Arduino. You want to use your desktop to gather that data from the Arduino and, and analyze it. We're going to show you how to write some code to set that all up. Now, in this video, we're going to do the most important part of this whole process, which is the design phase. In the engineering world, the first thing you do is you design it. You don't want to do what uh, novices and newbies and unskilled people do, which is just jump in and start writing code, because guaranteed you're going to get down a rabbit hole and make some mistakes. And in the end, you're going to throw up your hands and go off crying that you can't figure it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the rational approach and we're going to design this. And one of the big benefits of designing it is you kind of write down in English or whatever your language is, you write down the steps you're going to need to do. And once you've got those steps written down, it's a whole lot easier to write the code to actually implement those steps. So we're going to go through and think about this. What do we need to do in order to make this work? The general plan here is we're going to develop what's called a server client TCP software on all devices. And again, I encourage you to look at our recent video on understanding the basics of Wi-Fi communication, if you don't know what these mean. And our system is going to have a server here, which is going to be our desktop, which is always listening over the Wi-Fi for client connections. It's always listening. If somebody starts up, like our Raspberry Pi or our Arduino starts up, it's going to be listening for them. And when it sees somebody trying to connect, it will connect and then start the communication process. So the client is going to start up and connect to the Wi-Fi and the server. So we're going to have to think about two things. We're going to have to connect to the Wi-Fi and also to the server for each of these clients. And then we're going to have the server, once it's connected to a client, it's going to send a command to the client to say, hey, give me some data, and then the client will respond. So that's going to be the basic process we're going to implement with these devices. So let's look at the specifics of how we can do this. Well, since we're dealing with Wi-Fi, the number one step is that all devices need to know the Wi-Fi ID and password of whatever the available Wi-Fi signal is. Unlike just connecting this to like an Ethernet cable, with Wi-Fi, you have to have some more security because you don't want people just connecting to your Wi-Fi. So you need an ID and password. So the first thing is we're going to have to figure out how to do that. And the next thing is this client needs to know what IP address and port to connect to the server on. Again, we talked about that in our basics of Wi-Fi communication. So it's going to have to know what IP address and what port, 
which means we're going to have to figure out what are the available ports. We talked about ports before, so we're going to have to come up with a port on this server that will be accessed by these clients. We talked before about the IANA, and I encourage you to look at that previous video, and they have a long list of ports used by TCP, IP, and UDP communications. So what I've done is I've gone into that very long list and I've come up with a range. There's many ranges of what's called unassigned port numbers that your software can access. As a matter of fact, you can access most of these other ones, but um, this is just giving a list of some of the ports that are used by some particular software. Probably you don't have that software, so you don't have to worry about it. But I just randomly picked a range from 49,002 to 49,149, which is unassigned ports. So I'm going to choose randomly 49,002 as the port that we're going to communicate on. You can choose anything, but I'm just going to choose that because I can. Now we know what the port is. What else do we need? Well, we also, as we said, we need the server's IP address. So when the device talks to the server, it needs to know what IP address to contact. So how do we know what the server's IP address? Well, assuming we're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, there's many ways to figure it out. Um, you go to the Start Menu, Settings, Network and Internet. Go to Ethernet if you're connected via Ethernet. Or Start Settings, Network and Internet. And then Wi-Fi if you're connected to Wi-Fi. And you should get a window like this. Here's your Wi-Fi um, ID. And down here you can see it will give you the IP version 4 address. In our case, it's 192.168.0.2. So we know what the IP address. Yours is probably going to be different. You can also use on the command prompt IP config, and that will also tell you. But um, it's very easy to get the IP address. So now we've got the IP address and the port that the clients can use to access the server. Well, we'll assume we know the Wi-Fi ID and password for your Wi-Fi signal. Uh, we know what the port is. It's 49002. And we know what the IP address. So what else? Well, we said the server is going to be listening on Wi-Fi for any clients that want to connect. Somehow we have to make this server, we have to write some code so that the server is always on and listening on port number 49002. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's a bunch of ways you can do that. Maybe we can have like a time step and set a system timer and every time step it will go, go out and say, hey, is there any clients out there? That's one option. Or we can do events like maybe there's some sort of, uh, you know, this client tries to connect. There may be like a connection request received event, right? That would be nice if somebody tries to connect. We can just say, hey, somebody's um, tapping on my shoulder. Uh, let's go connect with that client. So there's a couple ways we can do it. So what else are we going to need to do? We also need to make sure we don't lose or confuse any data. So if we're going to be requesting data and receiving data, one of the nice things about TCP we talked about is you can keep track of the data and the data isn't going to get lost. So for example, if we're going to say, okay, what is the present temperature that you're measuring? It's going to send back an answer, but we want to make sure that we grab that answer as soon as it's available and we don't get like 25 answers stacking up so that we're, we're grabbing an answer that's like five minutes old. So that's something to keep in mind in our design. And we're going to have to write code for each device to be networked, right? We're going to have to write code for the server, for the Arduino client, and for the Raspberry Pi client. So we're going to be writing some code. Luckily, it's very simple, but we're going to have to remember to write code for those three devices. And it would also be nice if we could program the devices over Wi-Fi rather than USB. You may know, for example, if you're doing working with an Arduino, you generally program it by running a USB cable from the desktop into your Arduino and sending a program into the Arduino and then you can disconnect and connect and c communicate via Wi-Fi. What we want to do is see if maybe we can actually do the programming via Wi-Fi and not have to do any USB connection. So that's something to also keep in mind. So for the server side, 
let's kind of write some pseudocode in English to define what the program is going to look like based on what we just discussed, and then do the same for the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi, and that will help us to start writing code. So for the server, we're going to assume we're already connected to Wi-Fi, right? Because your, your desktop is generally connected. So we'll assume that so we won't have to worry about getting a Wi-Fi ID and password. It's already connected. And we're going to have to figure out how to start listening for clients on port 49002, right? So that's going to be one step we're going to have to figure out. How do you listen for clients on a given port? And then once we do that, when we get when we see a client, we're going to have to grab the client and connect to it. And if you're familiar with writing C sharp code, as we do a lot on this channel, we're going to have to set up a communication stream. Generally, if you're talking to another device uh, by any means, like a USB or an Ethernet or whatever, in C sharp Windows forums uh, .NET framework you have a stream that you set up, which defines the communication path. So we're going to have to set up some sort of stream to be able to communicate with this device after we've connected with it. And then we're going to have a loop. And the loop is basically going to write a command saying, hey, give me data, read the response from the client, and then wait, and then go through and do it again. So these are the basic steps we're going to need to implement in software. And now that we've got this pseudocode, it's going to be a whole lot easier to write the software because we just implement these steps. Now on the client side, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to assume it's not already connected to Wi-Fi. So we're going to have to somehow uh, get the Wi-Fi ID and password and connect. So step number one, we're going to have to connect to Wi-Fi. And then we're going to have a loop. Once we're connected to the server and it has accepted us, we're going to have a loop where we're going to continually try to connect to the server, make sure we're connected, and then wait for whatever command it's going to send that we said here in the loop. And if it receives the correct command that we're expecting, then we will go through and send whatever response it's asked for. So the loop is we're going to try to connect to the server, wait for the server command, and if we receive the correct command, send a response, and then wait and go through and do it over again. So these are the basic, simple software steps we're going to have to implement in our code. We know all devices are going to need Wi-Fi ID and password. Um, we know what the IP and port to connect to the server on. We've got the available ports. In our case, the server is going to be always on and listening, and we're just going to use a simple time step. Later on, we can look at a connection request received event if we want to. Um, we're going to have to keep track of the data. We're going to have to grab it as soon as it's available from the client. We're going to have to write code for each device, and then pro we're also going to want to figure out how to program the devices via Wi-Fi. So that's the basic design that we're going to implement. In the next video, we're going to start writing a very simple C-sharp application, Windows Forms, .NET Framework, and we're going to set this up so it can listen for clients. And once we've got this, it's going to be very simple to write the uh, code for our clients. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.